Hello, hello! Brand image. A seemingly boring concept that few people really understand. Not saying that I'm one of them sucking my own cock, but maybe together we can learn a thing or two. I will talk about how different gameplay, market, social, narrative, graphics, technicality, value, and audio may affect products and it may even help end users or even marketers and developers understand why a new product that veered off course just won't work in the long term. Now, because this channel is all about anime and games, we're going to talk about a few games that came out this 2018. Hey, stop! Why? Why? Now the concept here being that just as your left hand and your right hand are mere images of one another, right? Identical and yet opposite. Well, so too organic compounds can exist as mere image forms of one another all the way down at the molecular level. But although they may look the same, they don't always behave the same. You may Nikki is one of my favorite games since it was one of those different games, you know. The games that don't follow the general market. It was pretty dark and its gameplay is, well, you mostly being lost. They should really change its title to that. In February 23rd, 2018, a new Yumeniki was published with Kadokawa and AGM as the developers. Great! We already know where this is going. But as it turned out, most fans don't really like it. Why oh why does this game not work? OG Yumeniki is a top-down simple RPG maker game that is kinda open world because the world repeats itself. It lets you adventure for hours and it doesn't tell you what to do until you finally find an effect. It may discourage a lot of new players that don't like seemingly meaningless exploration, but it garners this specific audience that loves the game for its authenticity. It was a niche. Let's remember this word as we go on. The new Yumeniki is a mix of 2D and 3D with platforming puzzles and some top-down view gameplay, linear storytelling, and few bugs. Just tiny bit. It doesn't take long until you find an effect because the game wants you to do so indirectly. Well, what it did is that it discourages the fans that love the previous game's gimmicks and garners new followings, the people that like the new version. It loses its niche. Now the new game competes with a new market. Whether the new market is already saturated or not, I don't know for sure, but I'm inclined to say yes. On a side note, what I've learned is that acquisition costs more than retention. And certainly enough, now there's a price tag on a game that didn't have one. This is one of the biggest hurdles of discouragement. Of course, it's harder in the creativity department to keep fans, but the value we get as both users and creators to keep in touch or to focus towards retention is long term. It keeps coming and it's a win-win. Conclusion, this is my take. The narrative changed a lot if you're like fans because the ending is different. I don't know, there are two ways to interpret the game now. Audio, I really like that they kept the audio. The brand image changed, that's why it'll get mixed reviews. A classic brand image problem can be exemplified with the 1985 Coca-Cola rebranding. They were finished with their R&D saying that the new Coke tasted better after testing the new formula with 200,000 consumers. But what happened next was called the marketing blunder of the history. Most Americans were quick to buy the remaining of the old Coca-Colas, fearing that their beloved product will be gone forever. But what was wrong? The new formula got a positive reception from the respondents. It was even tastier than the last one. What happened? Those two, can you see, those two heptagons, or regular seven gons, are made from the same material, I can guarantee. They have the same surface coating, they have the same weight. Also, the mass distribution within each is uniform. Okay, there's nothing hidden. And yet, when I try to roll them, one of them rolls quite happily, whereas the other one refuses to roll. I 
dramatic difference in the dynamic behavior. And yet they look the same. Well, so such a small error is capable of causing a big and qualitative difference in the dynamical behavior. You should be able to convince yourself. Metal Gear. I don't really need to explain in depth what Metal Gear is. I use Metal Gear references a lot as a meme. The game's also niche. MGS franchise is a heavily narrative-based action, adventure, espionage, strategy, single-player game. Metal Gear Survive is a multiplayer, and unfortunately got branded as zombie survival game, with some narrative in its single-player game to the side. It's a spin-off. Its reception is the same for Metal Gear Acid and Metal Gear Solid Touch. Yeah, you know that's a game. They're not the worst games ever made. Well, if you think those are the worst, you haven't played a lot of bad games, good for you. They just straight off the image that Metal Gear has created. But then why did Metal Gear Rising Revengeance get positive reactions? They weren't too far off, basically. Political fighting and style action are heavy in game. Combat system was innovative and new. Plus, they didn't have a little controversial marketing issue back then. <laughs> In Metal Gear Survive, advanced CQC is gone, stealth gameplay for single player is really dumbed down to you poking nanomachine invested bodies with a stick. Dita does not exist in a dimension separate from your own. This is your world. This is its future. This is Earth in the 22nd century. Everything exists within a single timeline. Beginning several decades after your lifetimes, the world has been destroyed over and over. The cause of this time loop is the monster we know as the Lord of Dust. The Lord of Dust appears to be an aggregate of dread dust. To satisfy the dust's instinct to propagate, the Lord of Dust uses a wormhole to travel to the past, where it assimilates everything it can, thus destroying the world. Continuing to exist in that world, the Lord of Dust then travels back to the past through another wormhole, repeating the process. In this way, the world is trapped in endless cycles of destruction. Oh my god, my head hurts trying to decipher this. From analyzing the memories of the Dread Dust, it appears its origin can in fact be traced to the invention of medical nanomachines. However, how many cycles ago the dust emerged, that is unclear. Yeah, this is actual Metal Gear narrative, alright? But can we talk about that $10 save file for a new character though? Conclusion, this is my take. Their marketing kind of sucked, so that will affect a lot. Narrative, same. Graphics, technicality, same. Value, ten dollars for a fucking same. Well, the brand image is changed. We did a classic case study. Why don't we think of a more recent one? Top Gear. I think something similar happened now, didn't it? The trio Clarkson, James and Hammond left the program, then after Chris Evans left, Matt LeBlanc, Chris Harris, and R Rory Raid, yeah, that's how he pronounce his name, are now steering the show. Currently, view ratings for either the new Top Gear or the Grand Tour are lower than what the old Top Gear had. What could have they done better? We've done two of the bad brand image cases. Now let's have a positive one. Monster Hunter. Pretty easy to understand. Have I told you that the game is also niche? Let's just blast through. There are now open world environments or the ecosystem now actually interact with each other. Combining and getting items or materials are easier. Monsters are pretty easy to track once you find them. It's very good for acquisition and retention since loading time was one of the problems in earlier games. Most of Gathering Hall's aesthetics are fucking gone, come on! Um, where am I here? This is actually the Gathering Hub. This is the lively multiplayer area that we are supposed to be using with 16 other players according to Capcom. Narrative... yeah... 
I don't even remember what happened in Monster Hunter 3. Does Monster Hunter have stories? The graphics are pretty awesome, I'm not gonna lie. So, yeah, there's that. Not much of anything else, I suppose. Conclusion, this is my take. Uh, a bit of change in this gameplay. Market not so much because it has been. Monster Hunter. Yeah, it's Monster Hunter. Technicality, value, and audio. Nothing really changed. So, brand image. Not really changed. And most changes in game are for the better. They fixed some problems that were uh, in the last few games. I guess we learned a thing or two about brand image, eh? There are some things that can be taken here. Well, let's just remember to understand what attracted your audience and stick to it. This is usually called products. STP segmentation, targeting, and positioning. Remember to suck your own audience cock before sucking on others. Very important. And remember to innovate or renew your brand, but not too differently that it loses its personality. Now this video is done. Now you can go ahead and dissect that hunt down the Freeman thing. <laughs>